Spartan Nobby Part 1. Let's dive in and have a look inside this beast and prepare for this monumental cut. The Spartan Nobby is probably the most difficult cut I had to face. In this video, you will find out why. You will see my selection process of buying this Nobby and why I bought it without seeing it in my hand. You will see my analysis and preparation for this most challenging cut. And at the end of this video, I will give you three tips that I use to buy rough Opal online. They are priceless and will save you a lot of money. Yeah, so this is going to be a first part of the video. And this time we're going to analyze this, what I, well, actually I didn't. I, the person that sold it to me, who is a great blog, by the way, uh, Rob from Robbie's Nobbies, look him up um, on the socials and you surely can trust this person to buy um, some rough opal and uh, I will give you those tips at the end of the video of that helped me you know to eliminate the risk buying some of the rough opals but this Rob called us the Spartan well number of reasons the affectionate name we give and well one main one is huge and let's answer these questions for you guys. So what does this Spartan weigh? I'll do it in front of you. All right. Let's have a look. Put this on. There's been all sorts of guesses on the post. So let's have a look. We've got, I hope you can see it, 246 Carrots, it's a little bit white, so call it 240. And so it's huge. And a lot of the opals are huge, but don't have color around. But this Spartan is really gonna take me on. And you know, I hope you like the pun on the thumbnails with the Spartan taking me on because it will. It is probably one of the hardest opals I had to deal with but it's got a lot of potential and let's hope we get something out of it. So firstly, we need to analyze what to do with it and look at the colors. Well, as you can see, the biggest issue is all the scent and we're basically in the gut of this knobby here and the guts, well, this Spartan has eaten a lot of sand. Uh, so there is sand everywhere, but there's also color everywhere. And at first glance, you might say, okay, oh, by the way, sorry about the blood here, but uh, the Spartans already, the fight has begun. <laughs> nah, it's not from the Opal. Just made up a little mishap today. I was helping move somebody and scrape my hand on the brick wall. That's besides the point that that's just re reality of life here. But um, this, you know, you, you look at it and you go, oh, sand everywhere. You know, yes, it's 240 carats, but look at it. What can you get out of it? Or some of you might do the opposite. Go, so much color. I forgot I could get it. I've got to get this, Nobby. So much color and so maybe it's black. Well, all those are probably unqualified feelings and excitement. For me, and Rob has done a great job showing me a full video when I ask for it, um, on showing slowly the possibilities and the good sellers will do that. They will bend backwards to show you all of the Opal, how it should be, and won't hide any issues. So it is difficult, but the risk might pay off here because it's kind of visible what it is. 
and you cannot have 100% visibility. But one of the first, one of the main things that attract me to it is actually this part here. And the reason being is because this color bar here sits on black porch and it's got reasonable thickness. So we had a look how this bar travels and you can see it travels a little bit to here and it goes actually up from there. It's the same color bar that it's giving these colors here and it runs all the way. See, so if you do careful look at these things, you go, okay, there is color. Those spheres over the millions of years have saturated this opal. Now, it doesn't mean you can get anything out of it, but it's a good sign when the color bar runs around because it means inside, in different parts, that silica probably has gone in and put color inside. In this case, you can see all around here on that crystal jelly, it's quite bright, but you can see the sand underneath. But that is a possibility of getting an opal out of here too, because maybe we can slice this part, clean up the sand from underneath and get something out of it, even inlay. So there is a possibility there, but that's not the most exciting. So for to the untrained eye, somebody might look at it and go, oh yeah, this is a great color, I get it. And then end up with maybe nothing of value, just a bit of, you know, color with sand. But with a train night, you go, okay, I've got a bar running all the way across here, all the way across, all the way across to here. So this part of the opal is black. And to me, in this knob, it has the most possibility of creating one or two black opals. And this is why I took the risk, this part here. Anything outside of it is a bonus, even though that shows so much color. So what do we plan here? Now the torch, not needed in this one, firstly because it doesn't travel to black porch, but also because it's kind of visible. You know, you can see through this with a naked eye that there's sand underneath and what this one is. And this is a piece that needs to be separated. So my plan for this one is to separate this part of the opal from this part of the opal. First, I would just go inside here a little bit more and in there just to see exactly where that bar finishes before I slice it. Just a bit of a touch, touch up here and maybe just take that off and just see what it runs. And then see the red, look, this is, there is red, blue, and green. And this is what I'm hoping for will pay for this knobby, which wasn't cheap, but wasn't too bad. I mean, this size knobby, if it was all good, it would cost you yeah, <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. And um, this one hasn't. I will reveal throughout the two part series and the, the second part is coming up very soon. Uh, but first, this one. Reason I'm doing it in two parts. This is taking a long time to produce quality. So I don't want to rush. And I don't, you know, I want you guys to have a really good experience with these videos. So sometimes it will take time. And um, I want to do the cutting in another one because also the analysis, I think it's valuable. And I would like your comments 
to if you have any ideas for this knobby too, please let me know before I cut it because it's gonna be a week. Uh, that side we haven't even got into, which is another exciting part. But as you can see, that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna somehow cut this out. Yes, this black here along this way. Then I will slice it along along there, and there is another possibility. This is the other side. Look at that blue green, very bright. Yes, it's got sand beads here, but I think we can clean them up. We can cut stuff around it. So I want to end up with this piece with a bit of thickness on it and hopefully it turns black. Well, that'd be amazing. It's looking more dark gray. So see it goes on top here. So I would have to cut this out somehow slice this this way so this part comes off and and this part leaves that gray thickness down the bottom you never know could have black we've had knobbies before that look gray and then you go inside and turn black but this one probably gray opal and yeah cut out this bit so i think we've got three major pieces one two, three, maybe half a dozen stones, maybe nothing of value and clean. What's the risk? Well, you can see the risk. I think I've shown you enough. I've showed you my plan and how I went to analyze this opal, analyze it for cracks. And you can see that color bar all the way. And there's reds. Oh yeah. And there. Okay, I really hope you get involved and get me some ideas, but I think I'm onto it. It's just now putting it in a practice and not making fool of myself and stuffing it up, which wouldn't be the first time. As I said, I'm not an expert. Don't claim to be an expert. I'm just an opal lover with a bit of cutting experience, learning every day how to do it. And I'm always open to suggestions and constructive criticism. I want to grow this channel with you guys all together. And very soon I will introduce memberships. So those who want to have more value, you want to help me grow this as a community together, can get in and do all sorts of fun things as members. So by that, I will explain in another video and another time meanwhile so you can see on this side even though i say it, it turns all gray looking gray here but this is my point if it's smaller and look this is big opal i have not shown you the size of it yet let's see if i can put ruler here look at that one and a half inches and almost two inches and the width is, yeah, not quite an inch, but still, those with centimeters can see, you know, almost 20 mil thickness and 40 and 50, almost, approx. So it's big. Sometimes you get the smaller ones, you know, and you're looking great, but this is what can happen. Look at this side here. See there? It's all of a sudden got very dark. And when you have a look at this color here, it's definitely darker than this color here. So you can see, all right, maybe I end up with a black opal in there. What the pun, what the risk? Because the value, as you know, much higher the darker it gets here it's got a little bit of sand but yeah i just wanted to show you the potch it's, it's actually a great thing to have a look how the potch forms and no 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 let's have a look at the potch look gray dark gray black what a great education about the potch this is black guys this is dark this is gray 
this is in between. It's still called a dark. It might fall into N4 once you cut into it. So just might get in the black, but this is what you want. Look at that black porch. It's a really good educational piece, that Spartan. And I hope it will not defeat me. And look, and that's sitting on the black. The black is still running there. But this is sitting on the gray or translucent crystal. So there you've got dark, black, crystal, jelly, all in one piece. I mean, that is rare. I haven't experienced this kind of knobby. I haven't experienced cutting such a... I have cut some big stones, but not with so much sand and not so rugged and not with so many different types of opal in one. So this is what makes this video for me and this experience really exciting. And I hope you guys are excited as much as I am. So, and that's why I'm doing two parts because this is taking long enough already, guys. So I hope you're not getting bored because I can't get enough of this. Almost don't want to cut it. I'll be happy to keep it like this, just clean it up with a Dremel because it's a big one. Well, maybe that's an idea. I wonder. I might put a poll what you guys think I should do with it. All right. I have a think about it. All right. With no further to do, let's go to the promised three tips that I use to eliminate the risk buying rough opal online. And some of you might already know this. I use it. A lot of you may not know. So don't judge it because we are all sorts of people here with all sorts of experience. Not everything can fit into one mold of a human being. So the information I'm providing, I'm planning to provide, is diverse. Diverse for everyone. All right, let's do it. Tip number one. And I'm going to use the Spartan Nobby for this. And you got a glimpse of it before. You want a detailed video from the seller showing the whole thing in a slow motion. See, I could sell you this Opal like this. Get it to the camera and say, look, black Opal Nobby, the bar, red, green, and blue, and just show this, all that. And this is very close with the camera too, looks huge here. And all like this with a bar. And you don't see the whole thing. Maybe this is not the best example because it's got so much more behind. But imagine it, there was nothing else and somebody said 240 carats black opal with a full spectrum of color and show you this. And you get excited. Oh, look at that. There is a full spectrum. I've got to have it. And then they take a few photos of these angles, maybe even closer up, and you go, this is exciting. Then you get it in your hand, ignore those, turn it around, and you see all this. And you go, what's this 240 carats? I'm getting only 10 carats here, and it's got problems, and it's got sand. So the tip number one, do the video in this motion all around, all around seeing the whole opal up and down. And see the opals from, and I'll use maybe another one, from a distance. So it's a far shot. So you can actually see with the fingers how big the opal is, because if you see it like this, and sometimes they use tweezers and everything, it looks really, really big. And you can say, okay, this is good size. And for some of you that know a little bit less, might say, might not go by the carrots, might not realize what carrots mean. It could be flat, 10 carrots. It might not be that thick. So you want the size, you want detail video. So that's your first tip. If you're not getting that, you're taking a risk. You're taking a risk of getting something in your hand that is not what it looks like on the picture. 
or the video. And then there is a time wasted for everybody. You want to return the on the sale. I would take a return. Many over there will not. Will say, well, you you saw what it is. It's exactly what it is. It is ten carats. It is black opal or dark opal. Blah blah blah. Might have a crack. Might have a sand. So you want the close up further. And so there is your tip number one. Tip number two, skin and opal. Make sure you look at the skin. This is my natural skin. There's no filters on these videos. I don't use any filters on any of my videos or on my store when I'm selling. I actually try my best not to make opals look unrealistic. So I don't have many returns or anything. And I think... I'm not ideal and not the best, but I'm always trying to improve myself and minimize everybody's time wasting and be efficient because I don't want to waste your time here. I don't want to waste my uh, purchases times, my time returning repackaging. So I'll make sure that I, and I'm not perfect. Sometimes I do make mistakes, of course, but I make sure that I minimize the risk of the customer being unhappy and don't want to waste time. So the skin is very important because it shows you if the skin is too dark. Now, this is a filtered color now, and you can see the difference of the stone filtered and what it looks like gives you a false impression. You get it in your hand, looks nothing like it. You're not happy. Um, and it's just wasting everybody time. So look at the sticking color. Hopefully, you know, you know the seller, you're seeing them on some videos on the Facebook or, and you know what kind of skin tone they've got. So that's even better. But that's tip number two. See the skin and compare it to the colors of the opal. All right. Now for the last tip. Tip number three. I'm using a different opal. This is Cuba Crystal. That's it's a it's a big piece, 30 carats, right? And the tip number three is see the opal dry. Now this is your dry look. And you can tell. Opal looks like this dry with this kind of saturation of color. It's going to be good. Not only that, it will show you cracks a little bit better. And you can see there's a bit of a crack, but it's only going to here. And you can see the bar. So ask the miner, especially if you're spending a lot of money like this one would be. Actually, that's the last piece of I've got, and it is for sale in my store. It's not cheap, but it's great value and no risk. So I, this one is just magnificent because it's dry. You look like this. You see the crack. It's all honest. The crack runs just to here. So you just cut it, make a stone there, and then make a huge, huge, Hollywood star worthy opal pendant or multiple stones. But mate, if you if you can get this size opal in this color saturation, it's crazy. So now look, that's dry. And my tip is see the opals dry if you can. Um, and when you wet it to simulate the polished look, this is what you get. I mean and that's what's going to end up looking. But see, you still, in this particular one, you still see the crack. It's not as clear, but you see it. Other fractures, which don't have that sandy here color, you might not see when it's wet, but you will see it when it's dry from close up. So I hope you enjoy this and you find value in this number, uh, number one. Part one, Spartan taking on the Spartan or Spartan taking on me or us and wait a little bit for the part two of this amazing experience cutting this very rare 
<laughs> Opal and what becomes of it. All get involved. I might do some another post, maybe a poll about it. And watch for the memberships coming of some part of it will be uh, charity donations, which we will all, all vote for as members. And I really am passionate about not just the Opal, but about you all and about creating an amazing community of people to support each other, be kind to each other, not just in Opal, in life. That's my mission. That's my passion. And I hope many of you join me. And if you haven't subscribed already, I really appreciate you hit that subscribe button for me and make comments, like, get involved, and I will keep delivering. And I'll see you on the part two of this pattern fight. Okay. Thank you all for watching. I'm out of here.